Here at JC Yagi, we're getting into the holiday spirit. And of course, we have to pick the Hi-Fi product of the year 2022. First of all, thanks so much for subscribing and really following me along this audiophile journey that is this channel. There were a lot of products that I liked this year. In fact, I've spent hours and hours just listening to this speaker outside of my own review period time that I've set for myself because simply I just could not turn off the music. And that is rare, especially for someone like me that listens to speakers of various different kinds every single day. You know it's a great speaker when you can't turn the music off. And then there were some products that I just didn't like, and that's okay. Design that sounds somewhat like JBL, that would be awesome. I was wrong. These do not sound anything like JBL speakers or speakers that I actually like. Emotional, damn it! <laughs> Looking back, that video was hilarious, but it's true. Sometimes when you're on an audio file journey, sometimes you think you're gonna like it, but some, it's just not something that you like. And that is perfectly fine. It doesn't mean it's a bad product. It just means that it's not the right product for you. And that's okay. Anyways, today I'm going to tell you what I enjoyed this year that I truly appreciated. And I'm gonna pick the top winners. Let's go. So if you haven't watched my video of the best integrated amplifier of 2022, I'll link it in the description below. It was the Vincent SV237 Mark II. Now, I'm not gonna go on too much in this video about that because I already made an entire video about that because it deserved its own video. As well, I didn't review it yet on this channel. But we'll skip that one for this video. But that was the integrated amplifier of 2022. And now it's time to talk about the speaker of the year. So the best 2022 floor standing speaker of the year, bar none, was the Orendel 1723 THX speakers. And that may not come across as a surprise to anyone because I absolutely loved that speaker and raved about it. So I'll, I'll link to the review of all these speakers I'm talking about in this video in the link description below, as well as the pinned comment section. Anyways, the Orendo 1723 THX speakers were amazing. They were big speakers, so you need some space for them. But even in small to medium sized rooms, they work. They're not all that placement sensitive. And I absolutely love how sensitive the speakers were. A lot of the comments were asking, oh, can this eight watt amplifier drive that speaker, that gigantic speaker? And what people don't realize is that bigger speakers don't mean it's harder to drive. It actually means the opposite. Usually floor standards are more sensitive and better at power handling. So it's sensitive. It's like 91 dB in sensitivity, so you can run a tube amplifier like the Wilsonton R300 and so on. And it's just a beautiful sounding speaker. And for that kind of quality and build, and they're not even using just standard MDF, but something even higher quality, HDF on their cabinets. So really high quality, really good bang for the buck speakers. And I, honestly, it, it was one of my favorites bar none. So product of the year, for floor standing category would be the Orendo 1723 THX without a doubt. Now next up is the bookshelf speaker of the year. So bookshelf speakers, there are many and it's quite a hard choice because there's so many in different price categories and such, but I'm gonna go with my gut here and tell you what I personally enjoyed the most this year. And that is the CSS Audio 1TDX DIY kit speakers. Now, yes, this is a DIY kit speaker, but you can also buy it finished now for about $2,500, give or take some, somewhere around there. But for that kind of money, like I mentioned in my CSS Audio 1 TDX video, it's using high quality crossovers that you will find in much higher end speakers and high quality drivers, really nice cabinetry that you build yourself and save a lot of money and it's just a fun project and you can tweak it. In fact, I have my current pair right now with a friend re-veneering it to this exotic wood finish so that I can keep it and keep tweaking it to make it sound even better and better. So it has a lot of potential. It's a great project if you are into DIY kits 
anyone can do it because it's so easy with their little crossover uh, puzzle. It's like a puzzle. I, I call it a puzzle, but it's just so easy to do. I can introduce it to my friends and I love the flexibility of that speaker. But I have to say the close second was actually the GR Research Excellus Encore Kit. Again, it's a DIY kit. And I have to say DIY kits give you a lot of value. And GR Research is one of those companies when it comes to that. Yes, the CSS Audio One TDX kit was personally for me a better sounding speaker, but the Excellus Encore was pretty darn good. And I had a lot of friends that liked the sound of the Encores even more than the CSS Audio. So you pick your poison based on our review. I'll link to all of it in the link description below. But both of those speakers were being compared in a blind test to you know, much more expensive speakers, let's put it at that, and they both did an excellent job. So I am very happy to recommend these two DIY kits if you're about that value. Now, moving on to finished products, right? What about stuff that is not DIY, right? Let's say you don't want to buy a finished speaker from a DIY company. I just want something that is finished from a finished brand company, I suppose, then, I would recommend the POC R200. The POC R200 is an excellent, excellent speaker, especially if you are on a budget. Like pair this up with like a power node from a Blue Sound, for example, and that you have a mini system that sounds amazing. It is quite to treat, especially if you're on budget, you can get some really nice sound out of these speakers. And really that budget market has come a far, far way. And Pokar 200 is a testament of that because a lot of people bought that speaker and were just absolutely amazed. And so was I, because I still have it. It's one of my references. That's how good it is. And I know this is a little bit last year, but again, another runner up is the ELAC Unify Reference, a great speaker for the money, especially if you're into both home theater and uh, music listening, and you like imaging, you like phase coherency using a dual concentric driver. It is just a absolutely magnificent speaker that I absolutely enjoyed. And yes, it wasn't technically reviewed in 2022, but it was towards the end of 2021 and definitely worth the mention. And so these are my list of speakers for bookshelves, but definitely my favorite of the entire year was the CSS Audio One TDX. Now, the amplifier of the year. Now, this one is weird because it was again reviewed towards the end of 2021, but this is how good this amplifier is. I still have it today, the exact same unit that I use as one of my references because it's just simply that good of a value. And that is the Denafrips Thalo amplifier. I mean, this is a really nice sounding amplifier. I've compared it to a lot of the units, but it has that to be characteristic for a solid state amplifier. And it's pretty smooth sounding while retaining that neutrality. And it has that special sauce on the top end that has that sweetness added to it. That kind of reminds me a lot of like a 300B tube amplifier. It's not fully a tube amplifier, so you're not going to get that uh, full 300B effect. But surely enough, this is like one of my references for a reason and it's been around, sticking around and being kicked around and being used on a constant basis in my system because it's just that good of a value. In fact, I mentioned it in my Luxman M900U review where I compared it and I said, wow, you know you know what? The Denifer Stalo isn't better than the Luxman but definitely it has a lot of the characteristics that I like. In fact, I liked it personally on even better than the flagship Denafrips Apollo amplifier, which has a more warmer and lusher and more fat base in the bottom end. So for me, I really like this Denafrips Thalo and it is the product of the year for the amplifier section, weighing the balance and performance, right? If I'm talking about the absolute best amplifier I've heard in 2022, then we can go much higher in price tag and so can I for speakers, but balancing value for performance, I have to give it to the Denim Rift Thalo. And as I mentioned in my Kalish Model 5 review, which was the speaker of the year last year, 
absolutely perfect match. People ask me all the time, what is a good match with the Kalish Model 5? And I have to say the amplifier of my choice with the Kalish Model 5, even to this day has to be the Dana 5th Stalo. It just brings out magic with those speakers in my room. Now, lastly, my product of the year for the DAC section or digital, I should say, has to be the AudioNote 0.1X tube DAC. It is a very pure sounding DAC. And like I said, even though I have the Dan uh Terminator Plus and much more expensive DACs that I can go to, something about this DAC really draws me in. And it is the DAC that I keep going back to every single time I turn on my system because it's some Thing about it and especially in that video I explained what that is I at least I attempt to explain it it doesn't quite do micro details or nuances like my Denifrips Terminator Plus which is much more expensive or some other higher end DACs that I've tried but this DAC has that musicality it has a flow that is hard to explain that once you listen to it you immediately go wow that's, that sounds better but it's kind of hard to put your finger on what is better. It may be for some people, it may not be for you. But for me, it just flows better. It makes me enjoy music and stop pinpointing little details and stuff like that because it has sparkle and it has everything. If you really want to nitpick, it has everything. It's just that it just, it just seems more integrated and coherent and flows with that you know, two characteristics. So I absolutely loved this deck and it is a very musical deck. And that's why I pick it as my 2022 product of the year DAC category. So the next few are products that are not the product of the year for me, but certainly wowed me and definitely warrants your attention. Even though it did not win any awards, definitely great value and something that you should put it on your addition list. So first is the Wilsonton R300. Very good integrated amplifier. I just reviewed it, but I've been playing around with this thing for over a year now. And it's just a really nice sounding 300B tube integrated amplifier. Is it for everyone? No, it's not. It doesn't have output power for, you know, hard to drive speakers, but it is a sweet sounding integrated amplifier for a select few that like that type of sound that has like warm sweetness to it with sensitive speakers, maybe even open baffle speakers. It's an amazing little R300 integrated amplifier. And I say little, but they're not that little. They're full size tube integrated amplifier for a much, much less price than what you would expect for the performance given. So extremely good value. Now next is the Polk R700. Now this speaker is a big, big speaker. And definitely I had trouble picking the Orendo versus the Polk. Actually, I didn't, that's a lie. No, totally the Orendos win. They wipe the floor when it compared direct side by side. But the Polk R700 for the given amount of dollar, it is incredible. It has bass, it moves air for days. And if you're about that floor standard, big tower speakers for less money, this speaker is certainly something that you have to look into. And definitely one of my references that I still have again as one of my references in that price category. The next speaker that I want to mention is actually the candles from KLH. Now, KLH candles were quite interesting speakers because I got it from your recommendations actually. A lot of comments in my Kalish Model 5 review was like, hey, you gotta hear the candles. So I requested it and got it in. And guess what? They're still here as one of my references because in that price category, I don't think I can find a tower speaker that does what the Kalish candle does. It is not the product of the year for one simple reason because the Orendos exist and I like it best but it's also not $1,300. The Kalish candle for the money given, especially if you're in that budget category for a floor standard that is that slim, that is able to have that kind of bass capability and high frequency finesse, it is unmatched in my opinion and is still one of the speakers that baffles my mind how simplistic it looks compared to how it sounds. 
Lastly, I have to mention the Sonos Faber Electa Amator 3 and the TAZ ME1 speakers. Now, both of these speakers are above $10,000, so it's kind of hard to talk about value, but honestly speaking, I've encountered a lot of high-end stuff, and these two push the envelope of musicality in their own ways. The TAD ME1, for example, is the most technically accurate while musically pleasing speaker I have encountered that is a bookshelf speaker that mimics a floor standard experience. In fact, just forget that it's a bookshelf speaker because that speaker is basically a floor standard, a true three-way speaker that really, really pushes the envelope of engineering and being creative with the speaker design in my books. Now, the Sonos Fabro Electamotor 3 has been my favorite for years, and there's something about that speaker, and every person that has heard the Sonos Fabro Electamotor 3 in their room, and that's very important, in their room has always told me, Jay, there is something special about the speaker, and I feel the same way. There's certain tonality aspects that you just simply can't EQ that has that kind of quality to the sound that you just simply can't put your finger on it, but it draws you into the music. So it's a definitely an emotional speaker, a emotionally drawing speaker. It is not the most technically well-performing speaker. The TAD ME1 speaker is much better for that. But there's something about the Electamotor 3 that once you hear it and you understand it, it hooks you in and it's just a fun speaker that is totally different. In fact, I know someone that had the TAD ME1 and then switched to the Sonos Faber Electamotor 3, which is like a whole, you know, other world kind of speaker, right? And he absolutely loved the Sonos Faber. He said the exact same thing. The TAD ME1 is such an accurate, such a, you know, detailed and technically awesome speaker and the Sonos Fabers don't do what it does, but it has something about the sound that the Sonos Fabers just simply draws you into the music. So he's enjoying those speakers very, very much these days. So that pretty much rounds it up, but there are so many more products that I want to talk to you guys about in 2023 and coming up that would make this video a lot harder. I'm telling you, I'm so excited to talk to you guys about and share about these products that are coming up that I've tried and I hope to share more about it very, very soon. So make sure you're subscribed and click that like button. It helps my channel out tremendously and it doesn't cost you anything to click that little like button. Do it for the holiday season and happy holidays. And I hope to see you guys here very soon. Until next time, peace. Shh.